Welcome to the great outdoors. Yeah, you're right. We're back out here at the Circle L Quail Farm. And you can hear the quail behind me. This is, is the, what we call, I call it, the hen house or the egg house. And this was uh, featured in part one. But in part two, we're going to take you out to the houses where these birds are put after they're hatched, where they will eat and sleep and live for. 12 to 18 weeks and it takes a lot of preparation to get these houses ready for their arrival so that's what we're going to do today it's going to be dirty and work but hey somebody got to do it so hey join us come right along and uh, you can pitch in and help to Sconyersville, Alabama, which is uh, almost towards Bellwood, and located the four chicken houses that uh, the lollies have to raise their birds. I think one of these houses is being used to uh, house the pheasants that are used to produce the eggs, and I hadn't seen a pheasant in so long, it was just it made my heart warm just from seeing this, these little guys and females uh, in that house. There was also some new uh, baby chicks that were, were in one of the houses. And I think I saw some chucker quail. So this house, there's probably Wednesday, the house that we're going to be working on will be uh, used to, for baby bob whites. I forget how many will be hatching this Wednesday, but I'm sure that's exactly what this house is being prepared for. What you see here is a house that they've already scraped all the uh, old peanut shells out of. They made sure it was out of the corners and so forth. And they're getting ready to get the new shells and put them down. And once it's dried out and the new shells are put in, 
It'll be closed up and locked up and, and nobody will be allowed in here until the birds come. That way they can guarantee that the sanitation requirements for these birds have been met. You gotta remember that these are, are number one, they're game birds, and number two, they're livestock. So there's a lot of rules and regulations that the farmers, the lollies, have to abide by. And of course, that's one of them. So this floor, like I said, looks like it's pretty well ready to go. And you can see behind me that the house has been split in half. Now quail, when they're full grown or this big, and uh, pheasant are this big, you know, they don't need the full house to grow on. I mean, you'd probably 100,000 birds or more to fill up a whole house. And that's just too many birds to produce at one time. So they've cut it down. The feeders and the, the waters, which I'll show you here in a minute, uh, they only good for half the house. So this house is cleaned and ready to be prepared for the new set of birds. peanut holes. Yeah, they're uh, peanut shells. And they use this to lay down on the floors of these bird houses and these holes, you know what, they're easy on the bird's feet, but they also absorb all the moisture that may be in the house, be it urine, any kind of secretions, water, whatever it might be. And this keeps the birds healthy and it cuts down on the diseases and the loss of birds. These are just peanut shells. Okay, so far we showed you the, the clean peanut holes, the dirty peanut holes, empty floor that's getting ready for the new peanut holes. So let's take you to a house that's just had the peanut holes put in it. Now this house is one that's ready to go. You can see fresh, clean, Peanut holes, they're just laid this stuff down, they're letting it settle, letting the dust settle, then they'll smooth it out, let down the watering troughs and the feeding trays, and this house will be locked up while waiting new birds. The next thing I want to show you, these are the feeders. Now as you can see, they're up to the ceiling right now. You can't see me, but they're up to the ceiling right now and they move up and they move down. They're on, they've got a pulley system that allows them to go up and down. And in order to clean the house, they have to have the watering system and the feeding system off the ground so that they can get the tractors in and uh, do the cleaning. When the holes are back down and the house is completed, they'll use the pulley system and bring the feeders and the watering system back to the ground and the house will be ready to go. What you're looking at, that's the uh, drip water system. It kind of just forms a droplet of water at the end and the bird comes up and, and starts getting the water and then it continues to form the droplets until they're full and they walk away from it. But every once in a while a drop or two will drop and it'll go into that little tray and, and that tray will hold the water and the birds can drink out of that also. You gotta remember that it's important to keep the moisture off the floor to help cut down in the uh, uh, probability of any of the birds getting sick. Because every bird they lose is the money that they've lost. This is the feed that the little birds get. It's uh, 
This is what's in those feeding trays when they come down. Now this house is, is the final. This is what it's going to look like when uh, Garrett and Tyler come and bring the uh, baby chicks into the house where they'll spend the next 18 weeks. As you see, it's got new peanut hulls and the feeders and the watering troughs are down. This house is ready. It's just ready to take on new tenants. Next door that are probably two weeks old or so. And they'll be able to chirp and make noise back and forth. And I think the house we were just in, that was a pheasant breeding house. That's where that's their the pheasant house where they get the eggs. Okay. Uh, now you've seen all the stages of getting the houses ready. Getting the house is ready. And thanks for joining us. This is Al Vine, and uh, we'll see you again here in the great outdoors.